Yeah, Smart War Games here found a very interesting tool on the internet. Appears to be free for use. Uh, just would have li um, liked it to discover more early. And it is basically, yeah, as you see here in this demo app, allowing you or giving you a powerful set of tools to work with. Um, yeah, what you would expect from a military planning map, including the most up-to-date symbology. And yeah, perhaps if you followed my channel, you knew that we played games here by Simulations Canada, but also by Avalon Hill, uh, those retro war games, which were basically computer-assisted board games which came with something like yeah this map here and i showed you uh, different solutions how to import those maps or use it some layman methods like paint or something like vasal in case you don't want to print it out and play it physical as i know a lot of people don't have the yeah, space or the nerve for that and they simply want a fully digital experience while still trying out this yeah rather unique way of playing a war game and you might also want to use this this is of course for a very niche folk for people that play solitaire or multiplayer rules of uh, yeah board tabletop war games uh, which you can get for example war game world there's several of them we already checked them out which come with rules like how you calculate combat but you might not have a digital way to quickly apply those rules sure there's something like tabletop simulator we also use that with uh, those mm, custom mods but it takes a lot of time to set up and might not come with everything what you need why this tool i must say basically would allow you in theory to simulate yeah, every computer assisted war game, every tabletop or written war game rules, because it is so powerful that yeah, you should basically be able to do everything. Uh, to show you something, in the original view, you, you also saw in the demo, you can also go 3D, you know, like Google 3D and zoom in and see even uh, the mountains and everything and place there, place there those basically yeah, tactical markers and that's really everything everything what you need formations equipment but also tactical graphics um, in order to indicate what is happening uh, for showcasing reasons or in order to give you a, mm, yeah, a reminder of what a certain unit is doing in your comp computer assisted war game uh, that you are for example issued a unit, a unit uh, or a division or a movement command I, basically everything is here yeah? that is of course a lot of stuff i just want to give you a lame introduction because i myself um also didn't dive deep into that that is of course here serious uh software also meant for professionals no question and yeah it is trained at ots to this very day yeah that you think that they are playing some fully digital war games where everything is handled for them like we do in those uh, modern operational war games now there's still a lot of manual tracking and if you're looking for a new experience i definitely recommend you to try out something like simcan games or the avalon hill games and that is of course here some more complex stuff requires some reading and applying the rules by here at those simcan games you at least you only need to track something while the computer program is still assisting you uh, leading you through the experience yeah while not showing you a map the map is either physical uh, printed out or sure if there's a vazal module available for something uh, that might be uh, as a first choice for certain board games there's of course vazal modules um, might offer a more streamlined experience but for example the simcan games there's nothing like that and i must say if i would have known that this software exists and i will show you why yeah. 
yeah, as mentioned, you can basically simulate you have some war game rules, you could basically zoom in everywhere and the great thing is yeah, a lot of those games work with certain distances. Be it in metric or imperial, you can set that everything up here and then measure it out. Uh, like tabletop wargamers do, you could basically go at some tactical battlefield and fight out a battle between two tanks. And then you set up those symbols. You can even set up speed and everything similar in what we did in this harpoon module. You could also play the harpoon uh, rule set here in this because it is also allowing a naval everything and one great thing is also you can activate hexes yeah i don't see it right now you can access different coordinate grids which are in use in real in the real world uh, you can also change the uh, the, the map um, service there's a lot of settings, yeah. Check it over yourself. Uh, it is very deep, very complex, but you can also use it. Uh, use simple things. I will show you some simple things in order to get you started, especially considering uh, experience like playing SimCan games. Yeah, here for example. And yeah, I mentioned it somewhere. There's a setting you can activate hexes and. I have not the fastest PC here right now. And even set up how those hexes are. Yeah? So if you play a war game and you know a, a tabletop war game and this tabletop war game works with uh, 500 meter or 1 kilometer hexes, you could basically set up a hex field over a map or a custom image in order to simulate that. Yeah? Quickly set up a hex field. It is somewhere here, I don't see it right now. So I'm skipping it. Show effect. But it is definitely here somewhere. Coordinate system perhaps. Ah, that, yeah, exactly here. Hexagonal grid, and then you can set up hex sizes. Yeah. You see them here, it's a bit dark. Let's activate um, terrain. Yeah. I have now 10 km, that would be rather quite operational, yeah, but you can also set up here 1 km hexes. can also play without labels, yeah, and set up a hex field and play it, yeah. or simulate it. And that is something we won't do because I showed you this map here. Yeah. Now you want perhaps to use this utility that this software brings on your map. Uh, let's for this go somewhere where it's empty and zoom in very close and you can also insert layers uh, this can be some mil x layers vector layers uh, let's try something simple like an image layer okay. shows directories doesn't show directories okay let's load this here that is a map we are looking for it is added here um, we basically want to play it uh, full you can also rotate it and do stuff we want now to basically get a full X. You can still zoom out a bit, yeah. Uh, maintain aspect ratio. Sure, it's not really perfect, but with zooming, doesn't matter. Uh, you could also now, for example, insert this um, other page here. Uh, what was it again? Uh, not this one. Yeah, I think that is important. That is a two. That is basically a legend. But let's first work this. So okay, that looks good. First, we need to add that layer. Now this set up. Now I want another one. Exactly. I mean, you could also keep it open, but in order to give you some sort of digital tabletop experience, we will keep this beside the map. That is our, in order to read quickly, yeah, so we don't need to switch tabs. 
Okay. Good. Now those maps are basically fixed. You can't delete them here, but we are basically done with the layers. That's how easy you can do it. Now you can zoom in and work here like... Now you say, okay. And now let's say the, this maps are from um, Barbarossa to Stalingrad. That is one of the Simulation Canada games. I think it is something... What was it? Platoon to battalion sized. And then you go pick your icons. Yeah, you can also colorize them, do everything. And let's say we want to place an armored unit, yeah. And then you go into the editor, but you cannot already place it. Now let's say, okay, that is big, but wait. And there is a tactical icon or a symbol, symbology editor with all those official rules, yeah. Everything is also explained. If you want to learn about yeah, the designation of units, subunit, exactly here, often on this side, the higher formation is placed. And that is all standardized, yeah, for, especially for NATO forces. This you can also basically use this too in order to learn a bit how to use correctly and how to read tactical icons as they are often part of war games. So yeah, let's say it is company size. It's even explaining you. Yeah, that is often what you see across all war games. And you can a lot add a lot of formations, uh, informations to those icons. Uh, very good. Altitude death uh, for air, aircraft and um, naval games, which means you can basically play everything with it because it is also tracking speed. And what is not doing, I guess, like this harpoon tool, it is not cycling units ac according to speed, but who knows. You still need to move units manually, I guess. Yeah, effectiveness, for example, a unit suffers um, bad morale. Uh, you can enter it here with your own code. Now you play this Atari or Apple or DOS game and you receive the information here. Tank platoon, uh, tiger platoon stunt. Uh, you could add this information. And this information is appearing on this thing. Yeah? And you can change it. Now you say, okay, that's quite big. Yeah, no problem. You can modify this here. Go to the setting, simple size, millimeter. If it's a bit small, of course, reading becomes harder. Good. And let's, uh, let's say you spot an enemy unit, yeah, tiger platoon, and then you track those units, you order them, those units to move north, and uh, you gain information that they are sitting in um, 18... 18... What is that? 16. Uh, you can simply click once and then move when the hand changes, move those units. Uh, let's say you also have some infantry unit. You can't you can even enter those information very fast, place those units. You don't even need to enter anything. Yeah? And I'm pretty sure yeah, those labels which are now very small, but you can modify everything in this. It is a very powerful editor. And make those labels bigger. Yeah, this tiger is of course very small. If you work with the scale, if you zoom in, it is still somewhat small, but um pretty sure there is something to make those uh, symbols uh, solid um to deactivate the scaling. And yeah, not, not even that, but you can also yeah, use your can express your tactics. There's everything you need, yeah. Everything. And if in order to show you how flexible that is, look at this. Uh, can quickly draw. Well, of course, not the most beautiful, but in order to show you how quickly you can draw. Yeah? If you don't like something, you can simply remove it. Yeah? Uh, undo stuff. Yeah, and now you spot enemy units. You can quickly switch. Yeah. Hostile. Present. 
Yeah, and you can get also the correct hostile shape. And let's say uh, you moved your tigers here and spotted your units reports you here, I don't know, um, platoon size T-34 elements. Uh, and you s add quickly those information, it's very good. Yeah? Or company, yeah? let's say a company. And track the number and everything. Here you can also quickly, can uh, let's say the unit is destroyed. Uh, double click, operation condition, destroyed. Unit destroyed, yeah. Very good. I think that is the most powerful tool. Only thing I want to work out is this uh, scaling thing, so that it's staying basically um, one sized. Pretty sure there's a setting right now, I can't find it. Map tools, measurement. User coordinates, yeah, that is if you work with real maps, show scale. Mm, yeah, not really needed right now. But here, measure tool. Of course, it is now not showing the map scale we're using. It is showing the real world scale, yeah. So, that would require some placing the layer or this, this picture correctly or sizing it correctly to match the real world scale that is working behind. It gets, of course, those icons come smaller again, because I guess um, that is fine. But now if you zoom out, they don't get bigger. Perfect. Yeah, I think that is working. And here you can set basically the threshold when they start to grow. And I want them to stop growing when they hit basically the um, borders of the squares. Yeah, because otherwise, yeah, if they get smaller, I don't really care. So even we fixed even this, very good. Perhaps we will play one of those SimCan games using this tool. And it is also very, you can also basically do it split screen because this tool is very efficient. You're not requiring some big tool palette. And we can even, it is very efficient. We don't even need that much screen. And it is drag and drop. So you could also run basically, I don't have now a SimCan game installed, but you could run it here. And half screen would be also enough to absolutely work. Yeah, it is working fine. Sure, uh, the game is still in the background ca caching this uh, real world map, which we are currently in the ocean. Not sure if there's a way to stop that. This would probably tremendously improve. So what basically mean I don't want terrain. I want map size, nothing. So we know the option here. Terrain, map type, black, white, whatever, red, green. Yeah, but still. Yeah, zack. How fast you can change your stuff. Very good. I mean, I still miss, I think, no, I think I have all SimCan games. Wait, I had the Wikipedia page open. Torpedo. Yeah, I think this one we have. Yeah, this you could also play with this. Leah the Crossroads, but that is a board game. The sport games. Yeah, we're looking for computer games. Bommel at Gazala. Mm, not sure if I have showcased this one. Map. 
main battle tank Middle East. Uh, what was that uh, Arab Israeli one? Okay. Yeah, nevertheless, check out those videos and if you found those solutions there too cumbersome, yeah, test this out. Yeah, this is basically with this map or picture import, probably the fastest way to quickly set up a mm. uh, digital only experience for um, computer assisted war games or also for um, such games. Good. See you on the next episode. Good hunting.